Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Channel. Welcome to episode 55 of Game Programming. So today, I, I, I sort of left you guys on a cliffhanger in the last episode, as you people uh, are calling it. Um, I didn't actually quite finish the episode, I guess. Well, I did, but um, I sort of left us as, at, at this, and there wasn't really, the map wasn't really showing up. The map that we actually made wasn't really showing up. And again, if you missed last week's, not last week's, if you missed the last episode, then um, be sure to, to find it. <laughs> I was just thinking of a way to like link you guys to it, but there's there's really no way. Just go to my channel and find it and watch it because um otherwise you have no idea what I'm talking about. But anyway, last episode we uh we made a map and we ended up without the map. So there are there are a few crucial problems in the code right now. So first of all, um I don't know if you guys picked up on this. I read some of the comments, not all of them, but um I'm not sure if you guys picked up on this, but you can see that we've got this generate level method that actually, you know, converts pixels into tiles, but hey, like it's not really actually being called anywhere. So if you if you right click on generate level, hit references and then workspace, um, then over here, you'll find that the only place that it's being referenced is level over here. So if we double click, you'll see that the only place it's being called at is this level constructor. Now remember, that's the level constructor we use when we generate a random level, not when we generate a level from a file, which is this constructor. So very important that you copy and paste that into here so that after we load level, we do generate it just as we did with the spawn level. So that this, so sorry, with the random level. So that this actual generate level method actually, you know, runs and generates our level. Very important stuff. Um, the other thing, well, there's actually quite a lot more, but, um, <laughs> the other thing is over here, we've got this, this sort of this system that deals with, um, with handling like void tiles. And that's not exactly the right way to do it. That is a way to do it, but it's a bad way to do it. So first of all, let's isolate this by itself. The way that I prefer to do it is actually this way. So instead of doing this, I'd rather just calculate and basically say that if we're out of bounds of here, right? So in other words, if x plus y times 16 is less than zero, or if x plus y times 16 is greater than or equal to 256, and the reason is 256 is because 16 times 16 is 256. So you could do it that way, right? If you really wanted to. But, um, you know, I'm just gonna put 256 here because I know what 16 times 16 is. Um, so yeah, we'll do that, right? And the other thing is, that's all cool. Like we'll render the void tile, but we'll, you know, still kind of run this method, right? After, after we finish this if statement, we still kind of run this method. And if it is less than zero or greater than or equal to, and equal to 250, 256, what's actually gonna happen is as soon as it tries to run, this is gonna crash with an array index out of bounds exception, if that statement is true. So what we need to do is simply continue. And continue will actually make sure that we sort of skip the loop and do not run this code, do not run the remainder of the code in the loop. Um, so let's take a look at what it looks like now. Okay, so we get a crash straight away. Um, and the reason we get a crash is, this is probably gonna be a null pointer exception. Oh, I actually didn't hit the bug. But, um, okay, yes. Yeah, here we go, null pointer exception. Now, that's kind of obvious. And the reason we got a null pointer exception is because it happened at this line and the only thing that can cause a null pointer exception here is obviously leveled up pixels. So because it's an array integer, I can pretty much deduce straight away. Deduce, that's an interesting word, isn't it? Anyway, um, I can deduce straight away that level pixels just hasn't been instantiated, kind of like tiles has, but this hasn't. So let's make, right after tiles, let's make level pixels equal to new int width times height. And so let's run this code again, and we get another crash. This time, we've got a null pointer exception for the tile. This is fun, isn't it? This is this is real debugging right here. Running your code every time, just just basically going in like, yeah, yeah, this will totally work. I'll just run the code and see what happens. <laughs> I usually don't code like this, but um, you know, certainly it does help. So the null pointer exception here looks like something to do with tiles is wrong. So if I run it again, and we can see this null pointer exception that happens. So all of this is equal to null, right? And this is a bit this is a bit of a problem, right? Because tiles isn't equal to null, the stuff inside tiles is equal to null, right? And that's that. What that means is that 
whatever tiles is being equal to. So in other words, the, the only place where we actually set the value of, of a tile um, in, in, the tiles, in the tiles array. Yeah, um, the only time where we actually assign a value to each of the tiles in the tiles array is over here in generate level. So what that means is none of these statements are true. Well, none of them might be a bit of a stretch, but it does look like none of them because every single, it looks like every single thing here is equal to none. So what that means, it could mean one of two things. First of all, it could mean that, that the level file just isn't found, but obviously it is, otherwise we would um, actually throw an exception here. So the file exists, it can read the file, Something's wrong with our color coding. That would be my, my best bet here. That would be my, um, my expert opinion. <laughs> so let's open paint.net and let's have a look that we haven't actually screwed up the colors. So the first one is tell the grass, right? So there's probably a better way to do this. The better way to do this would probably be to actually um, open up our, uh, our actual level file. So right click, open with paint.net. All right, here we go. So I've opened our level file here. Let's zoom in really far. So first off, we, the grass color, right? Let's just grab the eyedropper tool and click. And now, now we see what color it is. So look, it's 00, zero FF00. Zero, zero. We've actually written FF00. Zero, zero. So let's replace that. Now, one other thing that we need to do is actually add an FF at the front. And that is to handle the alpha channel because that's sort of how buffered image in Java handles level um handles um colors so in other words you actually saw that when we were running when we were rendering the play if i open the screen class and we, we go to the, to the render player method then you'll actually see that we did the same thing here so if color equals pink and that is actually pink remember but we did add, we did add an ff out the front to fill up the alpha channel because otherwise the alpha channel you know isn't really correct the alpha it treats that as the alpha channel and then that that is the remainder of the color and that just does not work so yeah, make sure you put a 00FF00 zero, 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 zero at the front. Now, with you people wondering this, what the difference between this and this is, right? There is no difference between these two, right? That again, that is exactly the same thing as saying, for example, if I was to say, what's the difference between 256 and 0256 or, Zero, zero, 0026, right? They're both, they're actually equal to each other, right? But the thing is, when you put a value out the front, suddenly it makes a difference. So it's the same thing as if I was to say, is there a difference between 2, 20, 2, 2, 256 or 2200256? Suddenly these zeros actually mean something. Well, it's the same, same thing here, right? So if we were just dealing, if there was no alpha channel, that would be the same as that. Right, but since we need to add an alpha channel, we also need to add that to make sure that we are actually not drawing any red pixels. Um, so that is that is cool story, bro, right there. Um, so we should probably do the rest of the thing. So flower, I think, is this yellow thing, which is f, which is this again, right? But we'll just add an ff at the front, and I can assume that same thing with the rock, right? It's seven f seven f zero zero with F filled up alpha channel at the front, which means that it's completely opaque, right? FF is the maximal value, which is equal to 250, 256. And, um, well, yeah, <laughs> max value means that it's completely opaque, right? Zero would mean it's completely transparent. So like 0% opacity. FF means that it's completely opaque or 100% opacity. Um, so yeah, and we'll check that. Yep, that is 7F, 7F, 0, 0. Add an FF at the front, and we've suddenly got a color with an alpha channel. So let's take a look at running that. Whoa, check that out. We've got our map. So if we actually look at the map, we see that in the level file, we sort of drew a bit of a thing. There were these flowers in the middle, two rocks on the sides. Let's take a look here and check that out. Still running at like 3,500 frames per second. Um, and we've got the two little rocks and we've got the flowers in the middle. So yeah, check that out. It's pretty sick, hey? Now we do get this wrapping here. You can see that it's sort of wrapping. It's actually going up one as well. That's just, um, that's just, you know, some coding issues, I guess. But no, that, that's just sort of how it's working right now. It's how, that's how it's set up. 
I just wanted to show you guys this technique of doing a level. Just um, just because, you know, I guess this show is sort of about learning. <laughs> and um, and yeah, so you guys should know all the methods, I guess. So this is one of the methods and it's not, it's not, I, I wouldn't, I would never use it to be honest. I'm just going to be straightforward here. I would never use this method, which is the method of actually converting pixels into tiles. Um, where are we? Converting pixels into tiles, right? And then finally, um, you know, doing this thing, like it's messy in my opinion. I, rather, I would rather use the get tile method. So that's what we're going to do next episode. We're going to talk about getting into the get tile method and actually um, retrieving files and drawing them that way. But that is one way to do it. So now you guys should be filled with knowledge and yeah, <laughs> basically. So in other words, one of, the way, one of the reasons I actually like to do this is because a lot of you guys like to read source code from other, from other games. And you might not understand what they're doing here if it's not exactly the same as my code here. So that is one other way that people can, can possibly do it. Obviously, there are like a hundred ways probably to draw tiles. But hey, that's a pretty common one as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, you know what? Let's go for 200 likes this time. We have hit 100 in like a few hours last time. So let's, um, let's, hit, let's hit 200 now. So hit that like button and um, let's, let's reach 200 likes. Later, guys. Thank you.